Hi and welcome to Redeem Talks with Philly and we are here with special guest Triple O. Hey, How are you doing? I'm alright, I'm alright, it's alright. It's a nice grey morning. <laughs> we live in London so we I mean what, what, what can we do? But no, it's good, I'm good, I'm, I'm excited. Um, the EP is out now um, and we're feeling good, so we're feeling good, I'm feeling excited so Brilliant. can't complain, okay. can't complain. So I just want to start off like a lot of people may not know you. Mm, mm, mm. If you don't, where have you been? Um, <laughs> but just to help them out, let, let us know who is Triple O. Um, yeah, Triple O. I, I try not to talk about myself in third person, but um, yeah, no, I am a, a Christian artist, a rapper, poet, wordsmith, um, podcaster. Um, just someone who just genuinely loves the art form of music um, and is purely focused on like professing God's word and truth through rap, but then at the same time, just having good dialogue, um, however which way possible. I've uh, been doing this for about, oh my gosh, 15 years now. I've been wow. doing this for 15 years. Um, and it's been an amazing journey. Um, and I've had some amazing you know, stories and testimonies and just back and forth and encounters and conversations. And purely off the back of music, it's just been an opportunity for me to just express myself, but then at the same time, just like, uh, rationalize a lot of the things that have been going on in my life as well. So yeah, just an artist that just loves music and loves words and just, just loves to kind of just have good dialogue. Okay, brilliant. And speaking of your journey, you're a MOBO award winner. Yes, yes. Do you know what? It's, that was like 2011 and the title still holds on. And you're like, yeah, MOBO award winning. And it's like, <laughs> that was like a while ago. It holds a lot yeah, of weight. Do you know what? It's, it, and I'm grateful. Do you know what? The, the fact that um, an organization like the MOBOs can um, appreciate what we do, especially as a genre of music, which is so niche here in the UK. We don't, I, sh I don't take it for granted. And, and I know that those who've been nominated and those who've won don't take it for granted as well. So we we push to have gospel music, not even just gospel rap, but gospel music, Christian music in the UK on a bigger platform, especially because in other countries like, for example, America, mm -hmm. gospel music is almost like a staple yeah. within, within um, the, the culture and their, their music over there. Um, everyone goes to church. But over here, it's not so much so, but I think by God's good grace, things are changing um, and we just want to continue to push that change. Amen. <laughs> um, so you've classed yourself as a Christian rapper, a mm. wordsmith, mm. a poet. At which point in your life did you, obviously you realized you had the talent, but at which point in your life did you think to yourself, do you know what, I want to rap, but I want to rap for Christ? Um, I have told this story a few times, actually. So basically, yeah, I, I went to a school in East London called St. Bonaventures, and it's notorious oh, for escape. For escape. <laughs> so um, like a lot of grime MCs went to my school. So I was in the same class as Tinchy Strider. Um, below me was Gracious K, a couple of years above me was DWE, and then from time to time, like, Kano will come to school. So it, it was just like, there was just a lot of, a lot of that, that was happening around me. So I was like, oh, this looks fun, and I thought, let me try it. So, like, but I always grew up in a Christian household. So it was one of those things where um, I was writing those kind of bars, but I wasn't actually living that life. So there was right. one time I was at church, and I had a lot of, like, friends who were Christian rappers that were just rapping, and we were having a little cypher after church. And um, we were rapping, and one, he was rapping, and, he, and all, these are all godly bars, Christian verses. Mm. That was there. When it came to me, then I started, yeah, I was, whatever, da 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 and yeah. And they're like, yo, Trips, like, we know your mum. Your mum's, like, literally just over there. You don't live that life. Like, what? What's, what's all of this about? And it was so embarrassing. And then I thought, at that point, I thought to myself, do you know what? Let, let me just write what I know. Um, and what I knew at the time was just, like, the faith and just kind of, just, like, that was me. And I was, like, what, 17, 18 at the time. Um, so then I decided to switch up the content. Um, and from there, things started to change and progress. And I met some amazing people. Um, L Dubsy found me, was like a big brother to me. Um, and then we just started kind of, you just started introducing me to this this whole scene I'd never even heard of. Because um, in my small, narrow mind, I thought, oh yeah, I'm the first Christian rapper in the UK. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna blow that, that, that. <laughs> And then I realized there were just, that was a plethora of other artists that were doing incredible things. People like um, uh, Dwayne Triumph and Jahazo and, and Zion Noise and Green Jade and all of these guys that were doing some incredible stuff. And I was like, oh snap, there's actually a scene here. Mm -hmm. And this is like 2004. 2004, 2005. So I'm like, whoa, like this is actually a thing. And I think it was from there, as I started to immerse myself in the culture, um, I started to really get to grips with the art form and networking and, and everything like that. And it kind of just got went from there and elevated um, at that point. So yeah, that's, that's literally the inception of the journey. 
Brilliant. So what, during your journey, mm. um, you said at first you were just spitting any bars yeah, just yeah, to yeah. sound cool yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you brought it back to Crest. Mm. Was it at that point that you felt that you were saved? No. So it's funny because I was making Christian music, but I wasn't saved. And when when I when I when I told you like like how were you making Christian music and you weren't saved and I was just like because I was just doing it for the sake of doing it I was just putting the terminologies and the phrases and and the inflections and the the things that needed to be said in yeah. the lyrics. Um, it was not until um, someone actually sat down with me and um, explained to me what the gospel was, and I had the opportunity to actually understand like oh okay cool this is what Jesus did and this is what it means and this is what it is in relation to my personal walk, mm. I actually need to revise my whole perception of the Christian faith. Um, and then once I was able to kind of understand that and navigate through that, it was then where I was like, actually, you know what? Let me actually give myself to Christ. Let me actually give my life to Christ. And, and, really, and really dedicate myself to him. Mm. And we just started to walk from there. So it was, it, was, it was one of those things which was interesting because yeah, like I said, I wasn't, saved per se i thought i was i was a christian by name and by yeah. title but it was only until somebody actually explained the gospel to me and kind of broke it down that's when things started to, to move in that direction i started to take the faith a lot more seriously wow and how did that influence your music um it became very at, at a stage it, I, there was a period of time and i love this stage in my life and and um a lot of a few other artists can attest to this um where it became very theological and very kind of um, doctrine based and it was like yo teaching the word da, 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 just Jesus Christ which is not a bad thing like some of my favorite rappers are very theological in their music um, but then it was I, again it wasn't me it wasn't like that's not what I'd been called to, the kind of music I'm called to make um, but I was the 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 excitement of coming to Christ and actually understanding the gospel. And you say, yeah, let me talk about eschatology. Let me talk about the Reformation, five solas, solar fides, just, justification, all these kind of things. And it's good, but like, it just became very, almost legalistic in its, in, in the, in its approach and very kind of dogmatic in a way where it was just about these um, phrases and terms yeah. and trying to show off how much head knowledge you had, when in reality, the walk wasn't actually matching up and you were still very young in the faith, let's strip it all back and just kind of have a true reflection of who Christ is within the context of who you are um, and marrying that to, to marrying that together and then kind of seeing what comes off the back of that. I love that. I love that. Um, okay. Um, so you have a musical background. You mm. said you love music. Love Do you it, yes. play any instruments? Do you know what? I don't. And it's one of the most annoying things, uh, pet peeves I've had about myself. Oh, I'm I started, about that. I started learning. Do you know what it is? I started to learn the guitar. I was teaching myself the guitar, and I don't even want to say. I tell people, I got. I started getting busy, really and truly. I just started getting lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was. It was one of those things. Where, and I still got my guitar. My guitar's name is Sophia. Oh wow! And, you named yeah, your guitar. Yeah, I named my guitar. I named my guitar. And um, is it an acoustic guitar? Yes, yeah, an acoustic guitar. Um, and I'm learning. I was learning the chords and everything. And I just kind of just didn't stick with it. But I promised myself, and now I'm on camera saying this, I promised myself I'm going to pick it up again. Um, you, but, heard um, you heard it first here. here. You heard it here. <laughs> I'm your cannibal. But um, yeah, I'm going to, I understand music. So in terms of like vocal arrangement and when I song write, I can understand what goes where and harmonizing and things like that. Cool. And when I'm producing, when I'm co-producing with my producers, I'm like, I know what needs to be played. So I'm coming up with melodies and things like that. So I understand like the basics of music in that sense. But in terms of playing any instruments, Tambourine, maybe? <laughs> that, is not, that doesn't no, count. It, that doesn't it, count. It, it, it kind of Everyone does. can, even the baby yeah, can you'll be play surprised. a tambourine. You'll be surprised. They're going to play the tambourine officially. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I can't like, play a proper instrument per se. Okay. So, so you say you, you know how to um, create melodies and stuff. Mm -hmm. So do you sing? Um, I can talk of a melody. <laughs> if that comes. So I'll take that as a no then. <laughs> do you know what it is? I, do you know what it is? I can, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a singer. If I was a singer, I would sing in my music more often, which I'm actually doing as well, actually, where people can tell from the EP. But um, I wouldn't say that I'm a singer, but I, un again, because I understand the musicality of certain things and I'm trying to improve that aspect of my artistry. Okay. I want to get to the stage where I can confidently say, all right, cool, listen. Let's do a, a, a set where I'm, where I'm singing kind of thing. That would be really cool. So um, we, we'll get there. We'll get there in time. Cool. 
Cool. Um, so obviously you're a rapper, you're a musician. Do you have any other hobbies other than um, what will we find you doing on a Saturday? I love films, movies. I'm a okay. cinema buff. I'm a film buff. Oh my gosh. Like, I'm the kind of person, I'm such a nerd. I'm the kind of person, like, <laughs> I can I'm, tell from the glasses. Yeah, I know from the glasses. <laughs> I can tell, I'm the kind of person where it's like, I'm, I will know directors' names, yeah. and I will like, yeah, that director directed oh, this wow. and that, and yeah, this person produced this, and this person is the producer of that. Like, I, like, I just love film. Like, I love film. Like, um, and my Cine World card, and my, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we, we take this thing seriously. And then obviously, like, alongside that, like, I've got a group of friends, we have like a film podcast. Um, which um, is only on Instagram at the moment, but then like we're doing some stuff there, and I just I just love. I think again, it's another just another art form. So movies and films, um, where I can, I love to cook. Really? Yeah. Do you it's know fun. what? Look. What? Oh, okay. That's my next question. All right, there you go. We in the spirit. We yeah. got this. No, but I I I I I I love where I can. I like the culinary arts. That sounds very like. Yes. Yeah, it does. Well, yeah, um, no, the color, uh, I like, when I get the opportunity to, like, African dishes, well, Nigerian dishes specifically, I don't want to say, like, African dishes, oh, yeah, can you make me some kwanga from kwanga? Like, <laughs> can we just stick to Nigerian dishes? <laughs> but, um, yeah, some Nigerian dishes, um, I like, I love Italian foods, so, like, okay. even though it's really starchy and carbohydrate-based and just, like, putting on, I'm trying to be good, but, like, pastas and pizzas and stuff like that. Mm. Um, and I shouldn't say desserts, because I, I don't want to be promoting a sweet tooth, but, but you love I mean... So you started making your own desserts? I, 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 just following recipes. So like like simple, basic cakes, sponge okay. cakes and like really basic stuff, not like elaborate bit, sort of like red velvet and uh, okay. that stuff. Not just, that stage you know, yet. Yeah. This is basic. That's yeah, good. This is where, you know, when I get the opportunity. But um, yeah, again it's, again, it's just another form of expression and something that I just like. When I have the time to do it, then I will. But then time is so far and few between sometimes. just like, no bit difficult. But yeah, no, love it. Love it. Okay. Ooh. Um now I've been scanning your Instagram as oh. well. you I see you wear this quite a lot. Is that your own brand? So or they what? are shout out to FXT, FXT Faith by Threads. They are an organization that have their own brands. And um they've been they're doing some amazing work, but I'm collaborating them with them on my merchandise, sort of keep breathing um clothing line. So okay. um I'm helping them, we're doing some stuff with their stuff and then they're helping me collaborate on putting out the keep breathing stuff so yes. you might those of people those of you who follow my instagram you would have seen like the keep breathing shirts and the keep breathing track suits and the stuff which is just so 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 i'm so so yeah but yeah i gotta shout those guys out they're absolutely incredible um so amazing. yeah we're just collaborating and working together amazing so if we can go back to this wonderful picture hey. it's beautiful hey. explain this to us um yeah the journey has not been easy i mean i thank god because um uh, in May 2018, the Lord blessed me with a beautiful baby girl. Um, and the context of that was very difficult, especially because within the Christian faith, you know, there's a way of doing things. And just in general, like ideally, mm -hmm. the expectations for having children within the context of marriage is the way that things are meant to be done. Um, but from, with, with the reality of life that hit, it was different for me and I was just like, okay, cool, do you know what, praise God, this is the journey that we're on. And I don't want to give off the impression that it's been easy and that I've got it right the whole time. And this is, this is I guess this is where the, the EP comes into play because I think even um, when, I'm, when I'm kind of explaining the journey and, and whatnot and how that's gone, people are like, oh, but you didn't do this and you didn't do that. And I'm like, yeah, I know, like we all, we've all made mistakes. That's right. And not to say that, like I love my girl so much, but the reality was sometimes what I learned in that situation was when an orange is squeezed, out comes orange juice. Mm -hmm. And so when you're really under pressure, what's inside of you in terms of your character is what really comes out. And when I realized, when I saw the, the amount of pressure that I was under within that whole period, and I saw what was really inside of me, I was like, right, this, your character's really not good. Like, you are really struggling with these things, like these insecurities. Um, you're so, so consumed by what people think. Mm. Um, you know, your inability to exercise self-control or kind of walk in complete, total truth. Or even when you are walking in truth, there's still a difference between being truthful and being forthcoming mm. and all these kind of things. And I was just like, right, like, you really need to kind of revise your yourself. So it was at the back end of 2017 when I found out that... Um, 
uh, my baby girl was, was due. I was like, all right, cool, do you know, I need to step back. So I took, I just stepped away from music for about two years, just so that I can get life stuff sorted out and just really kind of put myself in the space where actually, do you know what? Let's work on refining yourself and refining your character back to a position where um, you are where you need to be within within the context of your faith and in the context of being a man and within the context of being honest and open and truthful about the whole journey. Um, and it was necessary. It was very and even now it's like it hasn't been easy and it's still not it's still not easy. But I'm like trusting God to kind of allow things to kind of fall into place in a way where he is glorified first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm able to really use this as an opportunity to encourage. Because someone once said to me, you're not the first and you won't be the last. That's right. So it's like, right, you've got this opportunity to share your journey and share your story and share your testimony and share like the realities attached to everything. Do so. Like do so in a way which is, which is, which is respectful, mm -hmm. but in a way which is very real. Mm -hmm. And people can say, all right, you know what? I'm going to learn from the situation because I remember when it happened, like there were articles that were written about it. And I was just like, oh, cool. Is that the, is that the level that would... So it was like, all right, cool. You're dealing with this on a, on a private scale. But then you got to deal with it. I had to do it on a public scale as well. Hence the reason when I put out this post, I was like, do you know what? I want to put it out just so that I'm able to focus on what was before me. Because like if it was someone else who wasn't having all these lights around them, they just have to worry about their pastor, the circle of friends, their mm -hmm. immediate, this and the other one or two, and, and then keep it moving. Mm -hmm. But then it was just like, yo, you have a responsibility to those who know you and are aware of your ministry and, and love what you do and who kind of are about supporting you, that you need to kind of say, okay, cool, this is the situation, guys. This is where I'm at. Bam. Like, let, let's just let's move forward. And you realize then, like, the encouragement that came off the back of this. I was just like, whoa, God, this is you reminding me and reminding everyone involved in the situation that you are in control and you love us and everything will work together for, for the good of those that love you and we love you. So therefore, all things will work together for our good and everything will be OK in the end. And if it's not OK now, it means it's just not the end. So it's just like all of this was just like something that I had to tangibly run with. And these are things that we hear all the time. Exactly. Right? But it it, actually happens. This is it. Like, oh, so this is this the is case. it. This is it. So yeah, well, that's 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 the journey that's there. And how has becoming a father changed uh, changed you, and how has it influenced your music? Um, in terms of like, it's made me very much more aware of my around, surroundings and and the way that I interact with people. I like that word. Surroundings, you know. <laughs> surroundings and the way that we I interact with people, but then at the same time with the music, it's just allowed me to be able to be a lot more um, aware of one thing, uh, of, of legacy. And I say legacy because I know that my children, when, when I have more in Jesus' name, amen, thank you, Lord. Like, that's, <laughs> when we have children, that's our legacy, yeah. you know? And they are a representation of who we are as people. And we are a representation of our, of our um, parents and those who have come before us. And it's like, okay, cool, God, as I'm writing music, what is the legacy that you want me to leave? And not for the sake of, acclaim, fame, notoriety, mm. but it's like, yo, in 60, 70, 80, 90 years time, when I'm no longer here, my voice will still be here. Mm. What, what do I want people to take away from that? What are people going to take away from when they pick up Flatline or Zero Not Equal to One or Cry Like a Man or the Overnight Garden series or whatever else I put out over the, over the past couple of years? What are they going to tangibly walk away with? And I think this new scenario, new setting has shaped in my mind and been like, all right, cool. It, these are just more than words now. Mm -hmm. This is like a stamp in time that can never be, unless iTunes and Spotify gets wiped away, you know, which it could, you know, True. it could. But then up until that point, until that happens, this is a stamp in time. And even when I'm gone, my voice is still going to be here. What do I want? How am I pointing people to Christ whilst I'm here and whilst I'm and, and when when I'm no longer here? And I think people who make and this is, I guess, this is what. I have to remind myself and I, I try and remind my creative friends, whether you're in TV, radio, podcasts, you're making YouTube, you're a poet, if you're making some form of art, you, your art is going to live longer than you. If you're doing a TV web series, whatever, it's going to li live longer than you. And when you are no longer here, your art form will be. And it's, that is then going to be a re representation of you. So it's like, all right, cool. Now that's gone forth and that's now your legacy. What do you want people to take away from that thing? Mm -hmm. And how is it going to resonate with the individuals who are engaging in that content? 
how are they going to take it? How are they going to perceive it? What are they going to learn from it? What, how is it going to encourage them? How is it going to minister to them? How is it going to make them laugh or smile or evoke emotion or thought, whatever. So when you're creating, you need to create with a greater sense of purpose mm -hmm. and with the long-term vision at head. So when I'm talking to new artists, I'm like, don't rush to put out an album because your album may be substandard. And 15 years from now, you'll be thinking, why did I rush to do that? Or you're rushing to put out content on YouTube. Why? Like, make whatever you, whatever you want to make and may it be to a standard where it's like, I, you know, I'm proud of that. And so, like, later on down the line, when we're talking about legacy, it just holds so much more weight. And I think, this, this, bringing it back to your question, my scenario, my situation, and, and everything that I'm, I've experienced over the past year and a half has reminded me of that. And not only shaped the way that I create my art, but the way that I live my life. Wow. So that's how that's kind of just positioned itself. Okay. And would you, would you say that you're now more joyful? Yeah. Oh, do you know what it was? Yeah. Depression is real and it's a very scary thing. Mm. And because of my um, inability to forgive myself and constantly condemning myself, and this is not even just, I'm talking like even years, years ago, I'm talking like five, six, seven years ago, you allow your thoughts to consume you to the point where you start to doubt who you are as a human being. Let's, let's put Christianity to the side. You start to say to yourself, all right, cool. Who am I? Why am I on this earth? What's my purpose? And you start all these, all these things and like, it's such a heavy burden. Mm -hmm. And that anxiety can consume you and you start to get panic attacks and you start all this kind of stuff. And, all the, and it's, you think imposter syndrome, like, oh my gosh, like people say that I'm good, but like, am I, am I gonna get found out? All of this stuff can consume you so much so that you start to doubt who you are as a person. Yeah. Talk less of your relationship with God and his perception of you because we know that he loves us so much so that irrespective of whatever we're going through, like, he's like, my child, I've got you and I'm not gonna leave you and I'm not gonna forsake you and I love you and I'm, I'm gonna just, just, just hold, stay close to me. But we start to think, nah, God, I've messed up. I've done this, mm -hmm. I've done that. And, and so what we're then saying is like, God, my sin is greater than your grace. Yeah. And like, that's such a backward way of thinking. And for me, I'm like in a space where now, where they say the joy of the Lord is your strength, like it, it really is because I'm like, yo, I'm filled with joy. I'm not saying that I don't have down days. I'm not saying I don't feel tired or, or overwhelmed or a little bit, but it means that- No matter what, deep down, yeah, there's a joy that- Yeah, this is it. And that's what gives me the strength to keep going and push forward. And, and, and so when I run around with keep breathing, people think, oh, it's just a cool little slogan that you got. No, it's like my life mantra mm. because the moment you stop breathing, you die. Yeah. So you have to keep breathing, you've got to keep going, you've got to keep pushing, you've got to... That's the thing that I have to tell myself every day. Yo, you're having a bad day. Cool. Doesn't matter. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Literally, that's, that's where that comes from. And um, that's why that means that specific, 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 specific <laughs> statement <laughs> means so much to me. Um, and so that's, that's what I try and remind myself on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you for being so open about that. Um, so for people watching that us are currently suffering from depression what mm. advice would you give um them? i would say I, I summarize it like this be honest with yourself be honest with god and be honest with the people around you be honest with yourself in a sense of if you know you're feeling away like acknowledge you're feeling away and kind of just like don't pretend because mm. there's two people there's two people you can never lie to everyone else you can lie to two people you can never lie to you can never lie to god you can never lie to yourself mm. try lying to yourself it just doesn't work you can deceive yourself to thinking something, but deep down you know the truth. So it's like, you be honest with yourself. Um, be honest with God. Like, mm -hmm. just have real conversations with God. This is how I'm feeling, this is where I'm at. And people did it throughout the Bible. Hello, Lamentations. Lamentations is not a really easy book to read. Jeremiah was, a, that's why he was referred to as the weeping prophet. Ecclesiastes, some of David's Psalms. Like throughout the Bible, you have men and women of God who were just being so honest with God. I'm having a crappy day. Mm. I'm not feeling this, that, and the other. Ecclesiastes is a very, very difficult book to read, you know. Um, same things with parts of Jeremiah. It's just, it's a lot. So being honest with God, like just having those real conversations with God and saying, look, this is where I'm at. This is how I'm feeling. Yeah. And then be honest with the people around you. Have one or two people doesn't have to be seven, doesn't have to be 17, but just one or two people who are, who you can be so real with and say, look, listen, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm wrestling with. This is what I'm navigating through. 
and then kind of just take it from there. Like, don't ask for any quick kind of fixes, you know. There are certain things you can do, maybe your diet, uh, drink more water, exercise, prayer, you know, do something nice. There, there are things you can do, and then obviously I'm, I'm an advocate for counselling as well. So there are things that you can do to complement that kind of like outline I just kind of shared, but at the same time it's a thing of like you have to decide within yourself, actually, do you know what, I want to move forward and I want to get better. And then off the back of that, I believe that God will carry us through. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, now you spoke about a podcast that you started on Instagram mm. and you're currently doing um, the G Major podcast. The G Major podcast. Hey, um, yeah. <laughs> so do you know what? Cause Just I, in case cause, you forgot. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I love to talk, as you can tell. Yeah. Yeah. Tell. I'm sorry. I haven't managed to get a I'm sorry. I apologize. No, cool. <laughs> Do you know what? Yeah. I, I, and then I was like, um, I need to put this in a more constructive, because I can't talk like this on an album. Nobody will buy the music. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Maybe I'm, people that have trouble sleeping. I don't know if that's a good, I'm, I'm putting you to, mm, I'll think about it. I'll think you know, about, yeah, those, talks those, and talks the talks and talks. And, talks like, oh. and I was like, oh, listen, <laughs> if, it, if it pays my mortgage, then why not? Um, but, um, yeah, so I, I, again, my, my love for music was is there. And I think with, with the G Major podcast, it was the thing that I started to really just have conversations about music and conversations which can stem from music and, 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 and people bring out in music. And I know there are loads of podcasts that talk about music, but there, I, did, I struggled to find a UK-based podcast mm. which was solely focused on music. Like, not life affairs, not current affairs. Like, but just, just music. music. And I was like, all right, cool. So um, the team and I, we just kind of just did that. And um, the response has been super encouraging. We went on a little break just to kind of go through a massive rebrand. But we're back now um, awesome. with new episodes coming in the next week and a bit. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just an opportunity for me to kind of just have good dialogue, have good conversation, talk about all types of music, not just Christian music, but all mm -hmm. types of music. And see, related, say, okay, cool, this is the kind of music that everyone's listening to. How, why, where, what does that mean for us? And then eventually use it as a platform to promote Christian music to, to an arena or to an audience who've come to us just off the back of listening to music. So if we're introducing you to more gospel, then cool, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, the G doesn't stand for anything in particular. It's just, a, it's a musical note. It's just G, yeah, it's just, yeah, because I think some people thought, oh, is it, is it a God major? I'm like, no, no, no. It's, it's just this, a note. It's just a note. So yeah, it's just the musical podcast which I started and which I'm having super fun with. Awesome. Um, now, gospel music in the UK hmm. is kind of, it, it's kind of small at the moment. What do you think we can do to... It, it, do you know what? It's funny it because it's like it depends where you are and depends what your circle is and depends who you're following. Because when we're, when if you're saying UK, mm. you know you're also including Hillsong and Matt Redman and Philippa Hanna and uh, LZ7 and Social Beings. And obviously because some people that's not their genre of music, that's understandable. And these guys are doing festivals and these guys are doing some amazing things and they're doing it now. And they're doing big numbers on, 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 on streaming sites. So like that, and you know, big church day out and all these kind of festivals up and down the UK. I'm not saying it's like selling out arenas, but it's doing all right. So when, so when people make statements like that, I'm like, from what angle are you talking about? Are you talking about Christian rap in the UK? Or are you talking about urban gospel music that's primarily artists who are based in London? Or are you talking about artists like Sonny Badu, who's in who's in Africa, and um, SO, who's in America, because they're still classified as UK gospel to a certain extent. Mm. And then you have Hillsong UK, who, who do things in Australia and, and whatnot. And obviously Matt Redman, who's writing some of the biggest worship songs in, you know, in, in the world. So it's like, to what degree are we... For example, but, yeah, I yeah. would say to someone, like, how many gospel songs have you got yeah. on your playlist? They'll yeah. be like... One. Yeah, so within. But how many UK rap songs have you got on your playlist? Yeah. About three hundred. So I'm not ignorant, and I'm and I, I I can completely agree with the statement that you're making. I just I, when when that question or statement is posed to me, I just try and let people think about the whole picture. But yeah, in the grand scheme of things, it's still a niche within a niche. Mm. No, let's not fool ourselves. Like, you know, you have artists who are maybe have an amazing following online in UK gospel wise and. You know, they've been doing this thing for a long period of time. But when we, when it comes to the headline shows, we're, we're not doing venues. A lot, not, most artists aren't doing venues 
that have a 500 person capacity, if I'm being honest with you. There are probably only three or four artists who could comfortably do a venue that holds 500 people. UK gospel artists, if we're talking about from urban, the urban scene or from rap or whatever, yeah. only two or three or four artists that could, that could do so. Otherwise, and that's 500 people within like, well, how many people are in London? How many people are go to Jesus House and KICC? Do you know what I'm trying to say? So within the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot, but it's something that shouldn't actually be slept on and shouldn't mm. be disregarded and shouldn't be overlooked. Um, so what do you think we can do to like push it into um i think number one the onus is on the artist to make continue making good music because mm. you can't force anyone to like what they don't like that's right if it's not good it's not good if they're not feeling it they're not feeling it so the artists need to make good music and quality music and pre present it in a quality way then at the same time like individuals who are um just in the general public the general church goer they need to actually be like make a conscious effort to listen to it so artists can make quality music, but if um, Bissi and Shola and Femi and Tosin, I don't know why I just use Nigerian names, from <laughs> your local church, if they're not even looking for it, yeah. then it's not going to be a thing. They're, gonna, they're not going to listen to it. They're not even going to know whether it's good or not. Yeah. And if they don't know if, whether it's good or not, even if it's still good and they like it, then they're not going to be able to share it. They're not going to be able to put it in their WhatsApp groups and share it with their other church friends. And if the whole church community is not aware of it, then how do you expect people who are not of the Christian faith to find out about it and listen to it? Because it's there, it's out there. There's loads of music out there, but people just don't want to look for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then as well, like, I think the church needs to be taking a more active part in promoting the music as well. So like, you know, really saying, oh, look, listen, if you're a youth leader or you've got a youth group, yeah, okay, cool. This is the playlist. Everyone subscribe to the playlist. Everyone go away, listen to this kind of music. Yeah. Do you get know what I'm trying to say? But youth leaders and pastors, they're not doing that. So yeah. it's like the onus is on everyone. Like it's not on, on one individual or one group of people. Everyone has their part to play. And I believe that if everyone plays their part to the way that the part is meant to be played, why won't you see Christian charts, Christian music in the mainstream charts? That'd be awesome. It, like it's, it's, because on average, to get into the top 50, or the top, sorry, the top 20, you probably only have to do about like 6,000 units in your first week. And I say only like it's not a big deal. <laughs> but like, are you trying to tell me there aren't 6,000 Christians in South London? I'm not even saying yeah. London, in South London alone. <laughs> they're all in South, why is that? No, they're all, everywhere. everyone's in South. South is a big South place. South is where it's at. <laughs> uh, that's debatable. But um, no, shout out to my South London peoples. But um, yeah, no, so it's just like, it's, it's doable. It's so doable, but... Is it going to be done? I don't know. I believe that the tide is changing and things, people are getting more interested now and music is, the quality is definitely increasing. When I'm, when I'm seeing a lot of the new artists um, over here in the UK um, and just some of the numbers that they're doing on Spotify and stuff like that, I'm like, yo, this is incredible. This is awesome, which is good. So you want that interest to continue rising over the coming, over the coming months. Amazing. Um, now I was at Emmanuel Smith's concert. Oh yeah, shout out to Emmanuel Smith, yeah. And he brought you out mm. as his special guest. How yeah. did that feel? That was my that was my first time performing at the Indigo too, and I was like, this is such a beautiful venue. But what what really like was amazing for me was just seeing how many people came out to support him and what he does. Um, and I said to myself, right, so this is what happens when we actually come together as a community. Mm -hmm. We can do these big venues at the Indigo O2 and really do some amazing things. Um, and so that was incredible. And like the fact that he said, oh, Drip, I want you to come out and do something with me. Like I said, yeah, look, listen, your family, I've got so much love for you. Um, and it's that kind of mindset of artists and people behind the scenes coming together we should be seeing stuff like that once every two months, you know, yeah. in that venue. It would be incredible if we, if gospel music was in a venue like that, of that size, of that magnitude, once every two months, once every three months, and we're able to really kind of impact culture in a meaningful and relevant way on a regular basis, that would be awesome. So hopefully here's, here's, more, here's to more uh, things like of such. Amazing. Now we saw you at, well, there was a picture of you on your Instagram mm. standing outside number 10 Downing Street. Mm, 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 <laughs> what was that mm. about? I climbed over the fence. I was bored <laughs> on it. You weren't really invited. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, ah, what's happening over here, guys? I just dropped, no. Um, no, what, what, so um, I was working, doing, a friend of mine, she was, she's doing some, she was doing some charity work with um, an organisation that help uh, place young people um, into homes for fostering. Um, and it was around Black History Month and they were inviting individuals 
of I hate the term influencers, but we'll, we'll use we'll use that term because I could just individual that term. So those kind of individuals down to kind of have a conversation, and it was really like incredible being invited down um, to kind of sit down with like a few other MPs, thinking how can number one um, we kind of in, uh, create a greater sense of awareness for people who need foster home and foster care, but then at the same time, like within our community, you know, black people um, and the impact that um, everything that's going on in the streets, how can we also as well, like really make a positive effect and impact and things, tangible suggestions as to how we can change the way that our story is being told and, and the, the narrative that a lot of young people are, are telling in terms of like knife crime and gun crime and the experiences they're experiencing. So. Um, Thankfully, it wasn't just a conversation, and you know, you know, people were saying, "Okay, look, listen, we don't want to just come here and talk for the sake of talking, but like, let's kind of make something tangible come off the back of this." And um, yeah, it was, it was, it was great. It was great. I think even even being in the room, I did feel a little bit of like a imposter syndrome. Like, why am I here? What what can I contribute to the to the conversation? But um, it's one of those things where um, I was glad. To kind of be in that room and just kind of just have dialogue with individuals who, who by God's good grace, are willing to make change. Awesome, awesome, fantastic. Now, I saw you at um, Still Shady's concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Shady. He's, he's a young, a young buck who I have a lot of uh, respect for. He's really come out of just somewhere and doing some amazing things. So, and a lot, of, a lot of the new guys. So yeah, he's, he's, he's good people. He's good people. Now he did a song called Cry Sometimes. Mm. Um, and before he started, um, before the singer started and he went into it, he was like, you know what? It's all right to cry sometimes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And um, that made me feel good personally because I had cried that day. Mm. And so when I heard that, I was like, yeah, yeah you know what? It's all right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, cool. Yeah. Now, your new EP. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, you that like that? do you like that? Link? I like the segue. The segue was like, I was like, where is she going? <laughs> okay, okay. I, when I heard Cry, I was like, all right then. What's it yeah. called? Cry Like a Man. Cry Like a Man. Why is it called? Um, because I wanted to um, just use my life experiences to kind of have some good dialogue and um, conversations. And really get to the point where I'm like, let's let's dialogue about emotional vulnerability um, in within men. And, oh, there it is. I'm checking. So um, yeah, and really kind of just get to the point where um, yeah, we just we just we just being real about what 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 we experience and and the beauties of just being honest with ourselves and and not being able not not being scared to show emotion and vulnerability because. Um, it's healthy. Yeah. It's really, it's really, but a lot really of healthy. men will say, nah, it's no, weak. And it's, it's ex exactly. And that's it's the, moist. this is the thing. And this is <laughs> the, this, man, is, the, this is the toxic masculinity that we need to break away from. And that kind of mindset, which sh is shaping and defining the social construct in which we built, we need to just completely break it down. And it's one of those things where I'm like, through this EP and everything that we have alongside it, hopefully we can break those down. And we can be like, all right, cool. Let's completely shift the story. Let's completely change the narrative, and be willing to have the dialogue that's necessary for us to kind of grow as not just as as men, but just as a society where people can be very um, healthy in their minds and, and be healthy with it. Because once your once your mind is in a healthy space, I believe that you can kind of fall into spaces where you need to fall into in general, in in, in a good way. So yeah. Cool. So, um, talk us through some of the songs on there. Hey. No, we're not allowed to hear yeah. them yet. No, I mean because obviously it's out now, is it? So it's like it's like. Um, oh, where do we start? Where do we start? Where do we start? I think one of my favorites is the last track. It's gonna be alright, and the reason why I love it's gonna be alright. Um, shout out to Volney Morgan and New Year. Oh Girls my days! Yeah, I just, love yeah, when I saw you work with them. I was like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, my yeah, yeah. This goodness! Is this is gonna so, be So. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where it was actually the first thing I wrote. Like, it's now, I think it's coming up to two years now. And what had happened was... What had um, happened was... What had happened was, um, I just, me personally, I wasn't in a good headspace. Okay. And I was just so overwhelmed with everything that was happening around me. 
and then I, I, I remember I was having a conversation with my good friend Icy, and um, he said to me, Trips, whatever you do, just keep writing. Like everything you're going through in life, just keep writing. So I was like, all right, cool. So I went on to, I was going, just, just, I kind of stopped music at this time. Mm. I was just, music wasn't my, my, wasn't my primary focus. I remember going onto YouTube and I typed in Chance the Rapper type beat because I just felt like expressing myself. Mm. And I found this beat. I was like, oh, this, this sounds really uplifting. So I started writing, 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 kind of thing. Bam, da 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 And then um, I wrote the chorus. And it's gonna be alright. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And you will never let me go. So I was just like, oh, that's really nice. Like, I can imagine the choir singing that. Wow. I wrote it down, recorded a voice note, and I still got a voice note on my phone with a date and everything like that. And then um, I remember for like three, four weeks after, it was, the voice note was just in my um, phone. And every time I felt really down or low, I would play the voice note oh. or I would sing it to myself. And I was like, ah. Oh. So I sent the voice note to my friend Shante Fuller, who is an incredible artist, shout out to Shante. And um, I'm like, yo, Tay, I've got this song, and um, I, I re it, 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 it's really kind of encouraging me. And she's like, all right, cool. So she sent me voice notes back of her singing it, and then we were just going back and forth trying to build the song from, just on voice notes, nothing elaborate. I'm not making music. We're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and every time we would have conversations, and she's feeling down, or I'm feeling down, she would just sing to me, it's gonna be alright. Well, I was singing to her, it's gonna, and like, we would just That's use it as a means of, being, of encouraging one another. Fast forward months, and I, like, I really wanted to get a choir to sing it, and like, just, we just, if things happened, someone was supposed to sing it, and it just, and then um, I did a collaboration with Vonnie Morgan and New Year for their EP, and I remember I was in the studio recording for their EP, and I was like, bro, I have something for you. Just give me like a couple of weeks, and I promise you this is gonna be special. He said, all right, cool. So I sent him over the stuff and he's like, yo, this is a couple of weeks later, I got everyone down to the studio. And I remember watching everybody record, like the harmonies and the, the transitions. I was there just looking, I'm like, you guys don't understand what this song means to me and like what you guys are doing right now and how pivotal this song is to like me just being in a good headspace. And I remember when they finished it, I was like, right, this is real. Like, this is actually really, really real kind of thing. Like off start, as an yeah, idea. what started off as an on idea a voice note. on a voice note <laughs> is me just kind of just trying to encourage myself. It just felt like it was just real. So every time, even the unmixed versions, the demo versions, the poor quality versions that the, that was that I would get from studio, I'd just be listening to it, listening wow. to it. I was like, this is real, this is real. <laughs> and now when we finished it, I'm like, wow. And I'll go back to the voice notes and I go back to some of the conversations between me and me and Tay. I'm just like, this is this is surreal. This is absolutely surreal. Mm -hmm. um, and to know that people have responded to it the way they've responded to it, mm -hmm. now that it's out, everyone's just like, yo, this is so encouraging. It's done other, da, da, da. I'm like, yo, you, again, you have no idea. Like, you have no idea. So, um, yeah, it's just been, it's been, it's been, it's definitely one of my faves. I think there are some other incredible songs on, on, the, on the EP that I like. Um, um, but yeah, that's definitely the one that carries the most weight for me um, on the EP. Awesome. And um, so you've worked with so many artists mm. over the years. Mm. Um, are there any that you would like to work yeah. with in the future? Yeah. That you're like, let you me, know what? So let me get the list now. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's loads of people that I want to work with, um, and it's just like I'm 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 just a fan of, like I'm a fan of music, mm -hmm. and if I'm a fan of music, like, and I'm I'm a fan of artists, and I'm like, all right, cool, I would love to kind of do stuff with this person and with that person, like across the boards, you know. Um, I think like the number one collab, which is like, uh, duh, would be um, Kurt Franklin. I'm like, yo, if, if mm, Uncle Kurt well, gave me a call, I'd be like, yo, that. I was just I like, that. that's you know this. So Uncle Kirk, if you're watching, shout out, <laughs> isn't it? Um, but yeah, there's just, there's there's a lot of incredible artists that I would I would actually love to do both both mainstream as well, even artists who don't necessarily make gospel music. But I'm like, we could make music, and I'd love to hear you kind of tell your story. That's like um, I think it was Nicki Minaj and Tasha Cobbs. Tasha Cobbs, yeah. What did you think of that? I, I, the song itself wasn't a great song. I don't really mind the collab. I'm just like, you know, it is what it is. I just thought the song itself wasn't a great song. Um, but I, I understand why Christians were, were might have been up in arms about it. Yeah, they were. Um, oh, P.S. Kanye, if you're watching this, shaman in it. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But um, yeah, no, I can understand why um, Christians may may have an issue with such collaborations. Um, and I think you do at the same time have to be mindful about the collaborations because you've got to remember a collaboration to some degree, you're, it's almost like you're co-signing the work of the other artist. Right. And if they're, if they're naturally an individual, uh, an artist who makes said music which contradicts the faith, it's then, okay, cool, are you co-signing their lifestyle? You're concerning the, the content that they're, that they're doing? So it's very, very murky waters. And mm. even small things down to like Spotify, yeah. You know, someone may be like, oh, this is, um, I don't know, um, Lecrae and, uh, I don't know, someone else. And that, that whoever that someone else is, they'll be like, oh, I, is he a gospel artist now? Okay, let me go. And then you're introducing them to their music and their whole world and, and everything like that. So again, it's such a, like a, yeah, one has to do it with such wisdom and tact and care. What If you're going to do the whole, like, gospel, non-gospel collaboration, it's been done before and it's been some amazing songs that have come out of it. Um, you know, referencing back to even to Kirk's, um, is it Stomp? Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, Lean On Me. And like, at the time, people were like, yo, what are you doing? What are you Bono from U2 and Salt and Pepper and da 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 da. But it's like, yo, like. It worked. This is the thing. Wow. Amazing. Um, so, obviously, there are, you love music. Mm. You listen to all different types of music, yeah. as you talk about on the G Major podcast. Is there any type of music that you listen to that you're like, you know, I, I can't take, I don't take to that? Um, heavy metal and <laughs> grunge rock. Um, soft rock I can do, but like okay. that, that's a little bit too much intense for me. Um, I'm probably going to get shot for this. I'm not a, I don't like Bashman. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, don't I don't have to, but I just feel like it's just not for me. Again, Bashman and even a little bit of Soka. Soka's cool. I think when you're in those environments, I get it. But what I about I, like Bob Marley. But that's reggae. Reggae is fine. I can do reggae. Okay. Reggae is so reggae. Is, cool. Reggae is reggae is a vibe. Is this love? Um, small doses. Maybe one or two songs on a playlist, but maybe not a whole entire project. Okay. So, but like um, Sean Paul and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bridget Banton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but um, I tell you, no. Do you know? Do you know who I do love though? Mm -hmm. Coffee. Okay. She's yeah. incredible. She's made. She's made me fall in love with, with that style of music again. I think she's absolutely incredible. Yeah, and yeah, she's awesome. yeah, I love. I love. I love what she's about. I, I just. I just. I find it hard to connect with it. That's just. And I guess and what I've learned with music, everyone's allowed to have their personal preference. There are going to be people. I know people who do not like. Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. who do not like Stevie Wonder, who have never really listened to Adele, and they think Stormzy is absolute garbage. That's fine, because there are people who absolutely love what they do. And for me, I'm like, there are gonna be people who don't like what I do, who don't connect with what I do. That's cool, you know, because if you don't like me, there's Faith Child, and if you don't like Faith Child, then there's other people, do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's like, you can like what you like and you shouldn't feel guilty for liking what you like or not liking what you like. So that's the way that music is. Music is, is an art form, it's subjective. So yeah, people are gonna have the differences, but that's what makes for great conversation. Because yeah. if everybody liked the same thing all the time, it would oh, all just be, be pretty boring. It would, yeah. it would be <laughs> Now your music, so if we, if we go back to like Flatline, mm. um, where you're rapping quite fast, mm. um, and then we come back to you know, your new stuff, mm. It's like you've kind of um, slowed it down a little bit. Yeah. And How important is it to kind of... Clarity is important. Mm -hmm. I think I'm getting old, so I can't do it as well. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> can't rap as fast. Can't rap. No, do you know what? I can, I can still. I can still. And, I, and what, what I do, I decide to do it in little pockets. And I still, I don't want to, I don't want to lose that. Because I think it's a, it's a skill. It's a, it's skill, a, it's yeah. a technique and whatnot. But... As I'm, make, as I'm maturing in, in my musical journey, I'm realising that people don't like what they don't understand. Mm. So if they don't understand it, they're not going to connect with it because they just don't understand it. So there's no point in giving someone a triple time fast flow and it's just like, it just sounds like, no, it sounds good if you do it well. And I think for me, it's like, if either I'm going to do it well, but I'm not going to depend on it because I don't want that to be like, it's like... Um, when you go to see, I don't know, a magician, and you're like, they show you the trick, and you're like, oh, wow, that's a really good trick. And they show you the trick again. Okay. okay. And they show you the trick again, it's like, <laughs> okay, do something else, you, you know? So um, I think as my, as, my, as my music has kind of evolved, it's one of those things where it's like, all right, cool, let's 
let's focus on making music that people can understand mm. and connect with. It's so funny because I was thinking about this this morning, like um, the, the categories that I, I place music into. And I think for me, it's bars, vibe and heart. So with bars, I'm just like, yo, listen, I'm going to give you a song. I'm just going to remind you that the pen game is strong. <laughs> just to, in case the kiddies forgot, the pen game is still, still strong. Got it. <laughs> you know what and then you've got vibes where it's just like, yo, this is just, this is this is something easy to listen to. It's just very smooth, just kind of just like melodic. And then the third category for me anyway is heart. Like, mm. I want to write something that's really going to touch you. So I will be, will be very honest or introspective or very kind of naked in the, in, in the music. And I, and when I make music now, I literally put make music in one of those three categories. And it falls into one of those. And if it, if it doesn't fall into one of those, it just doesn't get on the project now. That's the way I make music. Whereas before it was just like hit and miss. I'll, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. And so that's how I make music now. And when I'm making the triple time, double time flow, I'm like, where does this fall into? Okay, all right. And then maybe let's put it to the side a little bit and then sprinkle it here a little bit there. But that's, that's, that's and I think that's growth. And mm -hmm. I think every artist should be able to have some level of growth to their artistry. And I'm still, I'm still growing and I'm still learning and I'm still seeing how, where, where the art form takes me moving forward. Do you think that you will have any other types of music within your music? So let's say yeah. opera and... I'm, I'm trying to jump into praise and worship real quick. Obviously not bashment, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, do you know what? I think... I think Afro from, beats, which is really big right well, now. Well, I mean, on, on the EP, we have Awesome God, which has an Afro flavour to it. And same thing with The Colour Hope. So we're already kind of veering into that lane. Nice. Um, and I said that the album... Because we started working on the album now. And I said to myself, the primary focus of this album is to make a gospel album. And people are like, what is, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Like, you're a gospel album. And I said, no, I want to make a gospel album. And I said this, I said this, and I'm not even, I honestly speaking, God is my, God is my witness. I said this um, back end of, no, mid, mid 2019, I said, I want to make a gospel album. This was before Jesus is King and Jesus is Born, the Kanye West albums. And what I mean by a gospel album is that an album that really embraces the gospel sounds, mm -hmm. choirs and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Because you see mainstream artists dibbling and dabbling in it. So you see yeah. Stormzy do it, you see Wretch kind of do it, you see Sam Henshaw, Chance, they do it and he does it. And obviously now, more notably, Kanye with the two, the, the two projects. So I'm like, rah, you got mainstream artists making better gospel music than gospel artists. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for me, I was like, yo, I want to make, I wanna make a, a gospel album and I really want to kind of infuse that choir sound and really kind of make it like this grandioso mm -hmm. type project which really embraces the music, which is influencing all genres of music. Because yeah. when you look at like the history of gospel music, it really does have such an impact on R&B and blues and hip hop and, and all these other types of music. It just, and, and we produce these artists and they go out into the world and do some amazing things from your Whitney Houston's to your um, Mariah Carey's and all these kind of individuals. Like they start off in a church. So it's like, it's the foundation of, a, it's the bedrock of a lot of other genres. So it's like, yo, come back to that. So, and I, I love kind of like praise and worship and I love that, that kind of standard, how it, it's so, um, brings everyone together it does, yeah. it's about corporate worship and i think that's so dope and if if i can infuse some of that in some of the stuff that i'm doing moving forward definitely um but then at the same time like stay true to what you do i'm from east london like, <laughs> i love east grime and I, and I think and i think like <laughs> grime i don't want grime to be a dying genre like it shouldn't be so uh, yeah but there's just bits and pieces and i think for me i'm so multifaceted when it comes to making music anyway i've always been about like let's just put everything in the pot and see what comes out Awesome. Where about Sydney's? Well, I grew up in Plaster and Canning Town before moving out to Essex. Oh, so okay. That 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 neck of the woods. Okay. Okay. Cool. Nice. So, yeah, that's where we be at. It's nice. Nice. Um, I think. I think you've definitely matured through what's happened to you mm -hmm. and through your music and everything like that. Um. What's next for you? I, I know you want to keep on with the music, but yeah. have you ever thought about anything to do with like writing books or? So because you seem very knowledgeable. So um, we, I say we, I I wrote a book, but I didn't finish it. Oh, okay. And we didn't put it out. So with Zero Not Equal to One, the album before this, we wrote um, and and I wrote an anthology, and it was ready to go, and we were like. Um, 
getting, I was getting ready to kind of like put it all together. Um, but because of how life positioned itself, I was like, all right, let's put that on pause. Um, a lot of that content, I still could kind of, I definitely could still use later on. Um, but yeah, it's always been, I, I just need to discipline myself to read more. Cause I think, yeah. it's, I think it's a little bit cheeky. You write, you want to write a book, but you don't, you read. don't read. So mm -hmm. I want to discipline myself in reading more um, and, and reading varied content um, and just kind of improving my, my writing style. Um, but I would love to write a book. I would love to write a book. Um, obviously the podcast is still very much there. Um, and I, I really, I'm really, really passionate about the podcast. Um, not many people know that I'm an artist manager as well. Um, okay. So looking after a, a, an amazing singer by the name of Asha Elia, who's who's absolutely incredible. So she's doing. So I want to kind of keep doing that, but like just from behind the scenes, like you do your thing. I got you. A label behind. maybe? Or I, I, I don't know. know. Just, I, I just I'm I'm just I just love investing in new artists. Like I love kind of like seeing someone, seeing raw talent and potential, and just kind of pouring into them. And however which way, I'm not a huge eyes, but however which way I can be of support, then I will be. Um, yeah, I and mean, just kind of just being as proactive as possible with regards to the art form and everything surrounding it and kind of saying, all right, cool. Again, coming back to what we said earlier on about legacy, like this kind of contributing to the legacy, again, not for notoriety, not for fame, not for acclaim, but just so that there is tangible evidence of impact. Mm -hmm. Impact, impact, impact. Everything we do being centered on the gospel and, and the proclamation of Christ and like faith, just kind of just like reminding people, actually, do you know what? Like, God loves you. And I think so, that's missing from a lot of music at the moment. People yeah. just want things that they could easy listen in. Which is fine. I, I, and not to kind of like, if that's the kind of music an artist makes, I say a Christian artist in particular, do your thing. Like, but I do you think it's important to also have? Yeah, yeah, it's a balance. It's just like it's like foods. Mm. You can't just live on chocolate. We can't live on chocolate at all. But you can't just live on one type of foods. You have to have a well balanced diet. You gotta have vegetables. You gotta have some greens. Well, that's if you're not a vegan. Um, but you gotta have some meat. You gotta have. A, a well-balanced diet to be healthy. Yeah. So there are times, look, if I'm at a wedding and it's time to kind of shut down the dance floor, I'm not trying to do it to worship music because it just doesn't <laughs> carry right. the same vibe. That's right. Same time, if I'm worship, if I'm in, in, in an auditorium and I want to worship God, I'm not trying to hear grime kind of thing. And that's fine. There's Unless a, it's gospel grime. No, but then, but it's like, well, you even really then, do you get what I'm trying to say? That could change, who knows? But like, and, and if we're thinking about it practically and just being mm. honest with ourselves, mm. there's a time and a place for different types of genres of music. So it's like, we can't just say, oh, everybody needs to make explicitly Christian music because, yeah. you know, people joke, but it's, we, let's, we can, let's have the conversation. Like married couples, like and when they're having their, their married time, let's call it married time. Um, it's like, so what is it? Are you playing worship music in the background or are you playing the R&B? Okay, but why can't we have R&B gospel? Like, not and it, okay. If you're gonna have R and B gospel, what are you talking about? You're talking about love, or you're talking about God still. So you're trying to say the content <laughs> has to be like appropriate for the situation. And I, and I, my thing is like, especially as Christian artists, I can talk about the same thing as your Drakes and your Futures and your Wretches and your Gigs. We can we can talk about the same thing. It's just that my worldview is shaped by the Bible, so I want to come at it from a very different angle. Mm. We can still we can talk about knife crime. We can talk about what it's like on the streets. It's mm. cool kind of thing. I may not have been there but we can still i can still write about it maybe if it's from a um a, a more abstract you know because that's not my story and i yeah. think as an artist the key thing is about being true to who you are that's the key thing because there's no point faking your faking it and say oh i'm from the streets i'm from the roads or even faking it saying i'm super spiritual i'm the best christian in the world and i don't struggle with anything it's it's all a facade if you're true to who you are as an artist that's going to come through in the music so can you tell then, if making Christian music but you mm. weren't saved, can you tell if an artist is making music, oh, he's not saved yet, I, she's not saved? I, 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 does, it, does it come through like that to you? or I try not to, 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 to make those kind of judgment calls. Mm. Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. So maybe that's one kind of yardstick that, that, that could be used as, as a measuring, that to measure. Um, sometimes some people just have a very kind of like, simple writing style. It mm. does, that's not a true reflection of their faith. Mm. The mistake that we make is that sometimes we think that 
somebody's art form is a reflection of their entire walk. It's not. It's just a snapshot. Sometimes it's not even a snapshot. So you think, oh, because somebody's making deep music, they must be the perfect Christian mm -hmm. kind of thing. Or because somebody's not, if somebody's making music which has no reference to Christ, then they then they must be a pagan. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't really work like that. Yeah. Um, so I think you, one must be very careful not to judge somebody's walk or their relationship with God purely on the art form that they produce. Because it's so easy, just to, it's like Instagram. You give people what they want to see. Yeah, yeah. You allow people to see what you want them to see. Kind of thing. It's not necessarily. It's not you. When you wake up in the morning, you haven't brushed your teeth. There's uh, Drew coming out of it. Like that's you. You're not gonna post that. You're picture. not posting that picture. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? You're posting the one where you look all saucy and this. In the, da, 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 da. So it's the same thing with music. It's mm. like the art form. You're allowing people to kind of like see, and that's why if it's genuinely you. You within yourself will know it's genuinely you, and people will know it's genuinely you because they'll be able to connect with it. Mm. Brilliant. Now, you spoke about love, mm. and as um, Valentine's is coming, hey. where's your girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard that? Have you seen the, the meme? Uh, yeah, I've seen it. Do you know, this time of the year, is, is there always, a is, Mrs. Is, 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 is there, no, but it's just like one of those things where I'm like, God will provide in, in, in the time, um, mm -hmm. and I think. I think we, we, as a, we as a society, especially within the church, we place so much emphasis. It's a beautiful thing. Love and relationships is such a beautiful thing. Um, we place so much emphasis on, on that aspect of life. And that's cool. That's fine. Um, but it's Sometimes one, it can be too much. It can right? be too much. It can be a little bit too and much. And people can become obsessed with it. Yeah. But it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. So it's one of those things where I'm just like, God, when, you know, when, when it's time, it is, it is what it is. And so then I'm like, patiently wait and just kind of just learn from the mistakes and the um, past experiences that have shaped where I'm at currently. What would be your ideal woman? Um, <sighs> damn, you just for really, anyone really, out there that's really like, just, mm, really, you're, really put, you're, put, you're putting me on the spot. But I think, <laughs> I think it's key to kind of just, for me anyway, I, like, I love conversation. Oh my gosh. So you'd have to be able to talk to her. Yeah, listen, everything else fades. Everything else fades. But being able to have good conversation with someone and just dialogue and just go back and forth, back and forth. As you can tell, as you've seen, I talk a lot. Yes, yes, yes. You're supposed <laughs> to say no. no. I'm like, but yeah, like, just, see. yeah just, uh, I'm sorry, guys. No, it's a but good um, yeah, no, just being able to have like good conversation and just like, and just kind of someone I can learn from and someone who. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, this is what's going to sustain our friendship because that's what it is. It's a yeah. friendship. It's 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 a, it's a friendship with heightened feelings and heightened emotions and, and and deeper connection, and being able to um, engage in good, solid conversation and dialogue and like edify one another and encourage one another and banter and laugh. <laughs> there, that, that that counts for everything. Cool. And obviously, Nigerian food, right? I mean, but then you'd be doing the cooking. This is the thing. As so it's like this. So I, ca I can't make. I shouldn't make that a prerequisite. One shouldn't make that a prerequisite. So yeah, but yeah, conversation and dialogue is is, is key. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so thank you so for having me. This much is cool. for coming down. This is cool. Our first redeemed talks. Yeah, I know. Right? Um, we we had you as a guest judge and performer at Gospel Karaoke. Mm -hmm, you were mm -hmm. amazing. And, and it was it was a it was a blessing, and I love what. That whole establishment, gospel karaoke, I love what they're doing. Um, and I just, just pray that God will allow it to kind of go to new heights and Amen. new levels. Amen. Thank you so much. God Thank bless you. Thank you very much. Triple O everywhere.